There are four types of lead guitar players, and knowing what type of lead guitar player you are will help you because you will now be able to explore the other possibilities that are found in the other types of lead guitar players. Confused? Don't be. I'll tell you all about it right after this. Hello, this is David. If you're new to the channel, this channel is all about helping you unlock your musicality on the instrument. Before you watch this video, if you want to really unlock the understanding of the instrument, I'd like to invite you to check out my free workshop. It's called the Music Theory DNA Workshop. Completely free, the link is below, and in that workshop, you're going to understand how music works. It's very guitar-driven. It's going to unlock the understanding of music theory in a very practical way. It has helped many, many players, including me, and I think it's going to help you. It's free. The link is below. Check it out, the Music Theory DNA. First things first, when I classify the different types of lead guitar players, uh, this is not a classification that has to do with different levels. Although it's true that typically within, well, the first type of guitar players we're going to talk about, we have a lot of beginners. It doesn't mean that if you are in that category, you are a beginning guitar player at all. You'll discover that. It's just different approaches. I want to make sure that you understand that. This is not about becoming better and the best guitar player in the world, because if you've seen this channel, you know that, uh, well, guitar is not a competition. Guitar is an instrument, a tool, the pencil that allows the author, you, to tell your musical story. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Let's get started. And I'm going to tell you about the first type of lead guitar player. The first type of lead guitar player is what I call the scale explorer. And we all start in that uh, classification. That's why there's a lot of beginners in there because every beginning lead guitar player will have to start as a scale explorer. Now, that doesn't mean that it's only reserved to beginner players. So what is a scale explorer? Well, a scale explorer is someone who has to play a solo over a backing track. This one, for example. By the way, the link is below if you want to download this track. It's free. And um, once you have this backing track, you figure out what scale it's in. In this case, it's it's uh, B minor, B Aeolian. And if you're not familiar with that scale, or you're going to explore that scale, you're going to start playing it in whatever position you're in. You're just getting comfortable with that scale. This is a very tactile experience. Your mind is typically not really engaged in this yet. You're just exploring the scale, learning the pattern. Eventually, you might uh, develop some different ways to ascend that scale. And we all start in that phase because no one is born knowing how to play the minor pentatonic scale. We all have to learn it first. This phase is probably the most difficult phase to escape from if you want to escape it. And as a matter of fact, if you're a skill explorer, I highly suggest that you try to escape that phase. That is the only phase where I really encourage you to thrive to the next quote unquote level to one of the other uh, types of lead guitar players that we're going to talk about. The reason I highly suggest you try to escape that, and I'll tell you how in a second, is that uh, a skill explorer is a very much driven, directed by muscle memory. Uh, we have all these patterns, these shapes, that's how we typically learn new scales on the instrument. It's maybe not the best way, but that's typically how we learn it. And our fingers start getting comfortable, and as they get comfortable, they start 
almost imprinting in the muscle memory different ways of playing the scale. So maybe just descending, maybe descending, and that comes out a lot in our playing, and we feel stuck with these scales in pattern. You've heard about that before. We talk about uh, being stuck in the pentatonic box. Well, that's exactly what it is. If you're stuck in the pentatonic box, most likely you are still operating in that scale explorer phase. So really important to define what that is. I will tell you how to escape it after defining the three other types of lead players. Okay, the next type of lead player, and that is probably 80% of my guitar students, they're, they're in that phase. It's what I call the lick repeater. Those players have been playing for a while. Typically they're pentatonic players, which is great. Blues at heart, awesome. And they start learning licks, but they started learning licks when they started to play, and those licks sound awesome. And they're very useful because they can be used in so many different uh, different genres and keys and all that. That's awesome. You, you are a good player. People who listen to the lick repeater uh, are going to enjoy the music typically. However, the lick repeaters are oftentimes frustrated deep inside because they feel that they're playing the same thing over and over. A typical characteristic is uh, for still in B minor, B minor pentatonic. We're gonna hear a lot of these bends or these, or even these in the licks because they're very comfortable to play. A lot of licks are based on those three bends. And your solos tend to sound the same. It sounds great, it's enjoyable, but as a player, I feel frustrated. If you're recognizing yourself here, if you are what I call a lick repeater, uh, first of all, you're not alone. You're not a bad player. There are ways to escape that if you want. If you don't want to, if you're content, great. Please enjoy making music with these licks. Nothing wrong with it. We enjoy listening to them. But if you're not fully satisfied with your, where you're playing, uh, keep listening because I have a way to kind of escape and explore the other types of lead players. But just wanted to define that a lick repeater is someone who feels stuck with the same licks over and over. All right, there's a third type of lead player, and I've encountered uh, quite a bit of those in my, in my teaching years. That's what I call the mental player. A mental player is someone who has been typically exposed to modes or exotic scales or, or harmony or who studied jazz, things like that, and that's awesome. I'm all about education, but the mental player is stuck in the concept, in the theory concept of this, and obsessed about using the right scale for the right chord. And again, that's great to have that curiosity, but the mental player is really heavily influenced by, by this right here, what's in your head. The problem with that, oftentimes, is that the mental player has a lot of knowledge but that knowledge kind of clutters the freedom that one can feel when they are playing a solo, when they're trying to express themselves, because that creates a lot of mental blockages. Uh, thoughts like, all right, I've got a D minor seven chord coming up here. I can use D Dorian, D Phrygian, or D even harmonic minor. It's gonna sound a little out with a seventh. See, all these thoughts in your head prevent you to be in the moment. So if that's you, Again, I have ways to escape that type of player, and it doesn't mean that you're gonna forget about it, but just explore other types of things. We're just defining that right now. And finally, there is a fourth type of lead player. And that fourth type is the storyteller. The storyteller is a player who has a lot of feeling in his, in his, um, in his delivery, a lot of uh, heartfelt notes, maybe not as fast as some of the shredders, but his notes are very expressive and uh, a storyteller is really in the moment, sometimes a little too much because sometimes the storyteller might forget that an audience might be listening. But the storyteller typically feels very fulfilled with what he's playing. I say typically though, because every once in a while, the storyteller is going to be placed in a musical situation where 
he can no longer rely on all that that feeling that is inside of him because maybe the chords are a little little weird, a little complicated, and maybe the genre of music is different than what he's used to. However, the storyteller is um, is a lead guitar player who typically is pretty content and really enjoys playing different things. And the mindset is to approach a, a backing track, whether it's a backing track like this pre-recorded or with the band, as a canvas on which you're telling your story. Um, and over this, I'm gonna, almost like a painter would would paint over what's going on here and try to try to tell a story. Not really thinking of scales. Typically simpler things, more melodic. Now, this is not all or nothing. Oftentimes, you're gonna have different aspects of all of these four types of lead players into your own player. Typically, you'll have, you'll have one type that kind of emerges from the rest, but that doesn't mean that you're not having elements from the others. For example, I, I find that I've been gravitating a lot more towards the storyteller type of player with um, with some degrees of the other stuff. I, I've got some of the mental player in me a little bit sometimes. Um, I have some of the lick repeater for sure, I think we all do, and some of the scale explorer as well. The idea is to blend all these things together so that the listener is enjoying what you're playing and so that you, the player, feels fulfilled. Okay, so how do you escape each of these four types of layers? I'm gonna tell you. Let's start with a scale explorer, which everybody starts with that. If you're a scale explorer, I would suggest that you try to explore concepts found in the Lick Explorer. The combination of being a scale explorer and a Lick Explorer is really going to help you progress to the next, here's that word again, level of expression. Not level of competition, but level of expression. You're going to be able to express yourself a little bit better if you can combine these two. And doing this is very easy. You're going to start with a scale that you know very well, the minor pentatonic scale over the backing track. Again, you can download it for free. And uh, this backing track in B minor pentatonic scale, if you're a lake explorer learning that, well, just for let's just look for pentatonic licks and learn one. This one, for example. Probably the first lick everybody learns. Once you have that, Try to really visualize how that lick fits the scale that you've been exploring. And maybe combine it with, with the exploration. It's going to start becoming a little bit more musical. If you are already a lick explorer, well, you want to try to take elements from the next level, which is the mental player. These things kind of go hand in hand. Uh, be careful though. When you are exploring things from the mental player, it's very easy to get stuck in that mental zone where you overanalyze everything. The best way to do that is really to blend things together. Don't fully engage with the characteristics of the mental player, because if you do, again, music is gonna be very, very mental, very cerebral, very mathematically um, guided. I don't want that for you. I, I want you to always think music, musicality. However, uh, this is how you can do it. If you are, uh, take the same example, you started as a scale explorer looking at the minor pentatonic scale, you looked at a few licks. Now the mental player is going to ask questions. That's what it's where it starts. A question might be, well, what is that note that I love so much? I'm playing this note as I'm exploring the scale and playing licks and I just love it over this track. Uh, this note, for example, what is that? That's the question. So we're gonna find an answer. We're gonna try to define what that is. And that's where you can look at intervals. That's where you can look at some theory. That's where you can look at construction of different scales, 
uh, rhythm ideas, all those things to kind of give, a, give an answer to the question you had. The question should always be directed by what you're hearing. What you're hearing is going to be your guide as you, as you progress through the, the mental um, abilities of the mental player. So don't stay too long in the mental player. Just answer a couple questions and then quickly go back to where you were. Scale Explorer combined with the Lake player, and, and that's a really good basis. Last but not least, the storyteller. If you are a storyteller, you might still have issues. <laughs> because really, these four types of players, again, are not uh, all or nothing. In order to be an accomplished musician, and when I say accomplished, I don't mean accomplished as I'm the best musician in the whole wide world. No, I mean a fulfilled, a fulfilled player. You need to have elements of all of those things and it's kind of like a big circle. So if you are a storyteller type of player, and I'm speaking to me completely, I would highly recommend that you, you go back to one of the previous layers. And that's what I need to do. I need to, to revisit some of the other ones because I've been stuck in that storyteller mode for too long where I'm just basically kind of relying on the, the theory and the licks and the skill positions that I've learned from the other layers. And, and now, now I'm like this like hippie guitar player who likes to just kind of like <laughs> improvise, uh, whatever that is. And um, I get stuck. So anyways, if that's you, I would suggest picking another aspect, maybe a couple, because if you are to the storyteller um, and you're enjoying that, most likely you have been at some point a scale explorer, a lick repeater, and a mental player. So uh, pick a couple of those. Maybe combine the mental player, you know, all the theory stuff, with uh, the scale explorer and develop new ideas. And as you do this, you're gonna become a better storyteller. Now, what do you do if you want to become a storyteller? Well, that's where you put your guitar down, like I say all the time on, my, on the channel, because without it, you're no longer thinking like a guitar player and you have to uh, dig deep inside where the real music is, where your music is. And you, you start with a backing track and you just kind of imagine. You can vocalize it too and just, just try to sing over it. That is not something that would have come out of me just going up and down this, the fretboard. I'm gonna to try to find that. Okay, what was that? And then I'm gonna to try to play that. See what happens. I would love to know what type of player you identify with. Are you a scale explorer, a lick repeater, mental player, or maybe a storyteller? Let me know below in the comments. And if you want help going a little bit further with your instrument, check out my free music theory DNA. I think it's really going to help you explore all these different layers. The link is below. And if you want to stick around for another video, I'll meet you right there. Thanks for watching this. This one is a good one. I, I, I selected it for you. Check it out.